In the 1930s, the construction of this bridge was an engineering marvel. It would span nearly a mile over Puget Sound and finally allow the automobile to go where only ferry boats had gone before. America was still struggling with the Great Depression and money was tight. Acclaimed East Coast bridge designer Leon Mosef kept within a strict budget by using inexpensive solid steel girder plates and designing a narrow two-lane roadway. This strategy had worked fine in the East. However, what Mosef hadn't counted on was the complexity of the wind that blows through the narrows. Construction was going along just fine until the floorboards on the bridge's decking were put down. That's when the bridge began to move strangely. In the context of their knowledge at that time, they had no reason to believe that there was any way the wind could destroy it. So despite the bridge's unusual movements, it opened to traffic on July 1st, 1940. The Tacoma News Tribune quickly dubbed the bridge Galloping Gertie for its roller coaster ride in the wind. Howard Clifford was a reporter for the paper. It scared a lot of people. They wouldn't go across if they didn't have to when it was galloping. Uh, others, they just got used to it. But you'd be driving across, and the, the way it was galloping, you'd see a car ahead of you, and then all of a sudden it would disappear in a gully, and you'd be in the gully behind it, and there'd be a hill in front of you. And then it, all of a sudden it would appear again. Finally, local officials appropriated $20,000 to study what was causing Gertie to gallop. They were experimenting in the wind tunnel at the University of Washington and had decided to cut big holes in these solid panels to let the wind out and that contract was being let and would have started in a few days but wasn't soon enough. On November 7th, a 42 mile per hour wind began to gust through the narrows. Gertie began to gallop more than ever. Authorities closed the bridge to traffic after allowing the last motorist and his dog to pass. When he was halfway across, the bridge began to sway violently, forcing the driver to abandon his car and his panicked dog. The ridge was uh, not only galloping like it, it does, but uh, beginning to twist and turn, and he couldn't keep the car uh, on a straight path, so he finally got out, and he couldn't. He tried to get the dog, and it bit him. So he had to crawl on his hand and knees till he got to the tower, and then he could stand up and kind of stagger back. Gertie continued her wild gallop. Howard Clifford looked on, trying to figure a way to get to the dog still stuck in the car. I didn't know whether the bridge was going to fall or not. I thought maybe we could go out to the car and get the dog out of it. There was a sound that sounded like rifle shots. It, it was the cables from the main cable to the suspension cable down to the uh, bridge. And they were snapping and breaking and it sounded like a whip cracking. It was just then that the center section of the bridge dropped out. Just four months after opening, Galloping Gertie tore itself apart, tumbling into the sound and taking the car and the dog along with it. Howard Clifford himself barely escaped. We couldn't get out to the dog. I mean, it, it just, if I'd have gone out to the dog, I'd have probably been there when the drop bridge dropped. If I could have got out, but it was just bouncing so much that I couldn't, I couldn't get out there. What had made Gertie so affordable turned out to be its design flaw. The solid plate girders and narrow two-lane roadway acted as a sail in the wind. It's a phenomenon we now know as flutter. If there is a steady wind pushing energy into the bridge and it's vibrating in this couple motion, it will continue to get larger and larger oscillations until it eventually destroys itself. Today, the new Tacoma Narrows Bridge has four lanes instead of two, and the solid plate girders have been replaced with an open framework that allows the wind to pass through. The bridge has become a vital transportation link in Tacoma, but for everyone who travels the modern bridges of the world, a toll must be paid to Galloping Gertie. True to nature, nothing ever really goes to waste. The steel girders and other debris from the old bridge weren't a total loss. Today they perform an important function under the water. Galloping Gertie's remains have created one of the largest artificial reefs in the world. Before the bridge came tumbling down, the marine life in the Tacoma Narrows had no shelter from the swift underwater current. But now, 
Many types of fish and other sea life make their home in the bridge's fragments, including the world's largest type of octopus. Galloping Gertie leaves an extraordinary legacy, contributions to safe bridge engineering design and a spectacular underwater habitat.